Hey everybody, welcome back to Lodge Church of God's online service. We're glad to have you. As most of you know by now, uh, there is a new mandate that we all must wear masks while we're in public. We know that this can be stressful and frustrating, and so we want to help you out. We want to show you some tasks you can do with your mask on. We're calling it Mask Tasks. You can catch Corona from dishes too. Chastity, do you got your mask on? Can I talk to you about something? Hover, 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 All right, everybody, make sure your masks are on. Why are we wearing our masks if we're not going to meet anybody? This is so dumb. In all seriousness, one thing that I think we need to continue to remember to do, mask or not, is to have community with each other. Maybe that means calling, texting, writing each other, but also that could mean uh, staying six feet away, masks on, and having conversations with each other uh, during this time. And so we just want to encourage you to continue to, to do that. I want to give you two quick announcements and, and then we'll pray. The first one is, is this. Uh, if you have offerings or tithes, obviously we're still accepting those. You can send them one or two ways, either through the mail, and we'll have our address on the next screen for you, or you can go to Lodge Church of God and give online. And so both of those options will be on the next screen for you. The second thing that we wanted to let you know is this past Tuesday, as a leadership team, we came together and we met. Towards the end of the meeting, we started to talk about how are we going to reopen, what is church services going to look like after this is all done. And we just wanted to let you know that this is something as a leadership team that we're going to start talking about and praying about. And so we would ask you to pray for us and pray for our church as we figure out how God wants us to respond in this situation. And I think even more important than that is all of us realizing that whether we meet in a building or not, we're still God's church. And God is calling us to be kingdom workers in the area we're at. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for our service, but I'm also going to pray that God helps us see how we as a church individually should respond to, to reopening and how we as individuals should respond to the people around us out of love and grace. So, so let's pray. Lord, we just want to pray for the service, and while it may not be ideal, uh, we're not meeting in person, we just pray that you help us that you help us just be changed by the Spirit, that you move inside of our lives and that you work together, that you'll draw us together and that we'll be a community whether we all meet in one building or not. We also want to pray as a church that you help us figure out the best way to reopen. We're going to honor the, the rules that, that the law puts in place and that the government puts in place because we trust that you put them there. Uh, but I just pray that you help us figure out the best way to respond to, to what's going on and when it is time to reopen that you give us guidance on, on how to do so. 
And even more so, I just pray that we as individuals will be the church and will love our neighbors and care, our na- care for our neighbors, bringing the message of Jesus to them, having spiritual conversations about you with people around us. Uh, help us love and care for each other. We thank you for Jesus who brings us all together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This week for prayer, we want to focus on businesses, business owners, and employees. We need to be praying for these people who are working very hard to keep their businesses going, who are trying to keep their employees employed, and um, just to keep our communities going. So as you pray this week for all of the other things you pray for, if you have a specific business owner, maybe you know if you would pray for them. If you know someone who has had reduced hours for their uh, work, pray for them. If you just want to pray at large for our community and for the owners of the businesses, that things get back to normal as quickly as possible, and that God continues to keep our economy going, pray for that. But we just want to focus this week on businesses and business owners and the employees. So take a few minutes and pray for that right now. Well, this morning we're going to take a look at a fascinating story from the book of Acts, chapter 8, a story about Philip and a man he meets on the desert road out in the middle of nowhere, and what happens when God scatters his people. Take a listen as Mike reads you the text from this in Acts, chapter 8, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask, does the prophet say this? About himself? Or about someone else. Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. 
What a great story. And who would have thought Philip would have found himself in the middle of nowhere just a few weeks earlier? Kind of like us today. Who would have thought at the beginning of this year that we would find ourselves in the circumstances that we find ourselves in? Nothing like this has happened in our lifetime. We've had to rearrange our lives in ways that most of us have never really imagined. Our plans for the year really have been scattered, like it says there in the scripture. And yet, I would venture to say that you've probably had conversations that you never would have had eight weeks ago had not all of this virus transpired. And so while there are physical circumstances that are happening around us, God is still in charge. God is still moving His Holy Spirit to connect people to Him in the midst of this. And so you've probably had conversations with people that went something like this. Somebody might say to you, I've never prayed as much as I've prayed in my life like I have over the last few weeks. Or I've never thought about God as much as I've thought about Him in the last few weeks. So while we have been scattered in our original plans, you can give God credit for this because He is moving in ways to bring people back to Him. That's why a lot of this has happened. So we're thinking thoughts that we wouldn't have thought eight weeks ago. We're, we're doing things we wouldn't have done eight weeks ago. We're talking about things we wouldn't have talked about eight weeks ago unless all of this would have happened. In a way, our lives have been scattered, just like the first century Christians had been scattered. So when you look at Acts 8 and verse 4, it says, those who were scattered went on their way and preached the word. Philip was one of those people. Philip found himself in a place he never would have gone. They started out in Jerusalem. Stuff was happening in Jerusalem. There was all kinds of things going on in Jerusalem. And yet, things started to, to happen, and so they, they branched out then to Judea. And then the, the negative things started happening. And people started being scattered because of the negative things. And so Philip and some of the early Christians found themselves in Samaria. If you remember the story in the Bible, Jesus and the woman in, at, the, at the well, she was a Samaritan. And the Jews and the Samaritans had some issues with each other. They had race issues with each other. They had religious issues with each other. They just had issues, issues with each other. So Samaria was someplace the Jews wouldn't pick to go to first, and Jer Jerusalem was probably a place the Samaritans wouldn't pick to go to either. But yet in Acts 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 7, Jesus told his disciples, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. So regardless of race, creed, nationality, tribe, or tongue, Jesus' intention was that the whole world would hear the good news about him. And sometimes, 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 in order to get us to do what we have to do for the kingdom, God scatters us. And the virus and the subsequent circumstances that have surrounded us really kind of have scattered us as a people. We're doing things differently. So let me ask you this. Before we go on, I'm going to ask you to stop the tape here, or not tape, the video. Stop it in just a second here. Ask yourself this question. Are you having conversations you haven't had eight weeks ago or maybe ever before? Are you praying in a way that you've never prayed before? Are you seeking God in ways that you've never sought Him before? Has this virus scattered your life? Take a few minutes, think about that, stop the video, come back, and we'll talk some more. Well, I hope you took a few minutes to think about those questions. So let's pick up the story from, from there. Philip <clears throat> ends up in Samaria, 
during a great moving of God in that place. The Holy Spirit is moving in a mighty way. People are being changed by the good news that Jesus brings salvation. People are interacting with this message. People are being baptized. There's serious change taking place in Samaria. And in the midst of this great activity and this great action, Philip, we call it, gets a phone call from God. You ever get a phone call from God? Well, do you ever get a phone call that interrupts your, your regularly planned life, right? A lot of times it's a spam call, and you just let spam calls go to voicemail. And generally there is no voicemail because they're not a real phone call anyway. But Philip gets a real phone call from God. In fact, in Acts chapter 8, verse 26 says, An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up, go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. That's a desert road. So Philip got up and went. Philip gets his angelic phone call and answers the call. He knew the number because he knows God. He'd been in contact with the Lord before, so he knew that was no spam call. Because he knew the number, he trusted the number. Because he trusted the number, he got up and went. There was no debate. There was just obedience. So Philip left originally the big city of Jerusalem to go to the smaller town of Samaria and now he's leaving Samaria to go out into the middle of nowhere because God told him to and Philip didn't even debate the point I guess the question is for us do we debate the point because I think sometimes we do but when the Spirit speaks do we listen to him well when the Spirit speaks do we even hear him do the Spirit speaks, do we listen? When the Spirit speaks, do we obey? When the Spirit speaks, do we just send it to voicemail and I get back to you, God? Philip didn't do that. And because Philip didn't do that, because Philip obeyed right away, he went out into the middle of nowhere and actually found something going on out there. So God told him to go out to this road. He went out to that road, and when he gets there, there's this royal motorcade, is what we would call it, a group of government officials from the country of Ethiopia. They'd been to Jerusalem. They were heading home. In fact, the head of that delegation was the treasury secretary of Ethiopia. Verse 27 says he was the head of this delegation. He was in charge of the entire treasury of Candace, queen of Ethiopia. Now, there isn't much out here on this road, except now this delegation from Ethiopia and Philip. So out in the middle of the rocks and the sands and the desert, where there was nothing, God sends a messenger to meet someone who was looking for God. Philip was chosen by God for that moment, and what a privilege it must have been. Philip had been scattered from the home base of Jerusalem, but because he was sensitive, what we would call sensitive to the spirits moving, Philip said, I'll go. I'll go out in the desert. If you want me to go to the desert, I'll go to the desert. So first he gets a phone call, an angel of the Lord says, Philip, I want you to go. He's standing there in the desert on this road. He sees this delegation, and then all of a sudden, we would say he gets a text message from God because at that moment, the spirit spoke to Philip and said, go up to that chariot. Verse 29 says, the Spirit told Philip to go join the chariot. So Philip ran. <laughs> he ran to the chariot. And when he got there, he heard this official reading out loud from what we would call the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah. And Philip, when he heard this, said, do you understand what you're reading? And the man said, well, how can I understand? I, I need someone to guide me. In fact, here's what it says, verse 30. When Philip ran up to the chariot, he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? How can I, said the man, unless someone guides me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Can you imagine that, this government official? Here Philip is just out in the middle of nowhere. He said, well, come up and join me. So Philip did. Here's the scripture that he was reading. He said, he was, like, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation? For his life is taken from him. The eunuch said to Philip, I ask you, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? And Philip began to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning with that scripture. 
So the man had questions about God, just like people that you and I know have questions about God all of a sudden because our lives have been scattered. And this man had questions about God. And Philip ended up doing an LOL session with him, not laugh out loud, but a life on life session with him. And a life on life, this opportunity to come alongside someone and tell them about God and tell them about Jesus Christ because that's who this scripture was about. You know, some of the best conversations we have really are one-on-one -on -one conversations. I mean, you, you can come into a big crowd. You can come to church and sit in a gathering of people and a group of people. And you may remember some of the things that are said um, by the preacher, by, you know, by me. You may hear those things and go, yeah, I remember some of that. But by and large, by the following week, you don't remember much of what was said. But you know, there's something about sitting down and having a conversation with someone. And years later, you can remember the... The, the, the moment. You can remember what was on the table. If there was a table set, you can remember what was said because there's something about life on life. God uses these one-on-one -on -one opportunities for us to share his kingdom with others, to share our life on life experiences. And really some of the most impactful conversations we have about the kingdom are life on life conversations, not in a large crowd and not one person talking to a group, but it's you talking to someone else. God needs us to be a Philip so that we can go speak to someone one-on-one. -on -one. You need to be a Philip. I need to be a Philip. Sometimes we all need to be Philip to go speak to someone who says, I, I don't understand this. I need someone to help me understand what God is doing here in my life, what God is saying, help me to pray. He just needs us to be a Philip to help someone else from time to time. And I think God's, some of God's best work anyway is done with just one on one life on life. So right now, when you think about where we're at in life and what's going on around us, this coronavirus has created lots of conversations about God. Or is 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 this the end times? People are asking that. You know, is this is Jesus coming back soon? What's happening right now? People just need someone who is in touch with God to help them get in touch with God. God may be asking you to to get in touch with someone so they can get in touch back with God. In other words, is the Spirit, is the Holy Spirit asking you to go talk to someone? If the Holy Spirit is asking you, if he's, if, if he's phone calling you or texting you, are, you, are you paying attention? Are you listening? See, we can't gather in our church buildings right now the way we normally do, but that doesn't mean conversations about God don't happen because you know they are. What if I can't get to the building? That's okay. God will send someone to the desert road where we happen to be. God needs people who are called by his name to answer the Spirit's call and run to the conversation like Philip ran to that conversation. And as much as we want to be back in the building worshiping, and we all want to be back in the building worshiping, I hope as a church we don't miss the opportunity for these life-on-life -life conversations because there's people asking questions now they've never asked because their world has been scattered. There's people saying things about God, I want to know more about God, that they've never said before because their world has been scattered. And just like the people of the first century whose world was scattered, you know, our opportunity is to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Those people in that time were motivated to tell everyone the good news of Jesus the good news of his death and resurrection that made the way, that builds a bridge for the forgiveness of mankind so that we can all have relationship with God. That's what he wants. God wants relationship with everyone on the planet. So those people just started telling their friends and their families and their coworkers, anybody standing in line of the, of the Walmart at that day, if they had a Walmart in that day, they were just telling everybody about Jesus. What a terrific example that is for us. The church was scattered, but it did not stop them from sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone. In fact, the book of 1 Peter tells us to do that. It says, you be ready any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason of the hope that is in you. And we can have hope in the middle of a pandemic. We can have hope in the middle of chaos. We can have hope in the middle of our scattering. You say, well, I'm not sure I can do that. I'm telling you, you can. You can do that because the Holy Spirit is our helper. Just like he helped Philip, he can help you and me do this. The Spirit will help us get to people that need to hear the good message or the good word, the good news, the message of the good news. 
But not only is he preparing our hearts, he's preparing the heart of someone he's sending you to. That man in the chariot, that Ethiopian, that day, his heart was ready to hear someone explain it to him. He needed someone because God was dealing with him and he's going, I can't figure this out. I need someone to help me figure this out. And God set Philip to help him figure this out. And that's what's happening. He's going to send you to someone who needs to get it figured out. So just while he's working on you, he's also working on someone on the other end. And that connection point will be awesome because someone is wanting to know more about God, more about Jesus Christ. And when the Spirit is working between two people, he, he's, he's not doing this in a helter-skelter way. There's a plan. There's a plan for them and there's a plan for you. So, when we fully align ourselves to be God's kingdom ambassadors, we don't have to create a plan. God already has a plan. We just need to make sure that we're aligned with His plan. We need to be willing to do and to go and to say and to do what needs to be done whenever we get a phone call or a text from God. Who's your Ethiopian? Where's your desert road? Are you listening to what the Spirit is saying? Are you willing to go? Yeah, there's chaos out there right now. There's a scattering right now. God's not unaware of that. He's still moving his kingdom forward, and his desire is for all people to be reunited with him in fellowship. He has a kingdom purpose for your life. You have a person, a personal story, I'll put it that way. You have a personal story of your experience with Christ to share with someone. And the Spirit's saying, don't uh, forget this, the desert roads. Yeah, there's, there's gatherings, and that's great. But there's a desert road I need you to go to because there's someone sitting out there going, I can't figure this out. I need someone to help me figure this out. What's great about this story about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch is what happened, what, what history shows happened in Ethiopia in the subsequent years from the first century on. Dr. J. Vernon McGee writes in his commentary that the first great church was not in the United States. The first great church we'll call it a megachurch, was not in the United States. The first megachurch was not in Europe. The first megachurch was not in, in Jerusalem or Asia Minor. The first great church was in North Africa. The Ethiopian evidently went back, and through his witness and influence, a church was begun there. Why? Because Philip was willing to go out into the middle of nowhere where there wasn't a crowd and there wasn't a gathering. And he said, I'll, I'll tell you what this is saying. Let me share this with you. That so transformed that man that he went back and told everybody he knows. History shows that that, that grew, that Christianity grew out of that region. Look at verse 36 through 39. Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning with that scripture. <clears throat> they were traveling down the road. They came to some water. The eunuch said, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? So he ordered the chariot to stop, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him any longer, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip appeared at Azotus, and he was traveling and preaching the gospel in all the towns until he came to Caesarea. As a child of God, you have an assignment to share the gospel with others, your friends and your family. I have an assignment to share the gospel with my friends and family, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to share how his death and resurrection saved mankind from eternal separation with God. And you can be that messenger for someone. I can be that messenger for someone. But if you're watching and you're not a child of God, you can be. You can be a child of God. God's desire is for everyone on the planet to be in relationship with Him. The Bible says that can't happen except through Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus said, nobody comes to the Father except through Him, except through me, He said. And in Romans 10, chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it says this, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Baptism is the outward declaration of what has happened inside. Outward declaration of the forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ. Like the Ethiopian, you can be saved for eternal relationship with God, and I'm inviting you to do that if you haven't done it. The church might be scattered right now, but God's not scattered 
He's still inviting people into relationship with him. And I'm inviting you into that relationship as well. My number's down here on the phone or on the, on the screen. You can call, text me if you want to talk through that and uh, be happy to talk with you and talk through any of these things that we, we've discussed today. Any questions at all. So uh, feel free to reach out to me that way. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and bless your life and look forward to talking with you again soon. Thank you.